Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tea Time with Tanya. I'm Tanya. How you doing today? Today is Wednesday, the 16th. Oh my gosh, we are 16 days into February already, guys. This year is already going super fast. Let's start this off with a blessing. Dear universe, dear spirit guides, please give us a blessing for this 16th day of February, 2022. Oh, look at this tree. We get the, the blessing of endless possibility. Allow your inner child to be the master for a while and don't take things too seriously. Have fun and explore the world of endless possibility. Something wonderful is created through imagination and innocence. Namaste. Let me read that again. The blessing of endless possibility. Allow your inner child to be master for a while and don't take things too seriously. Have fun and explore the world of endless possibility. Something wonderful is created through imagination and innocence. Namaste. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, let's get this party started. I have some excellent questions this morning. Um, the first thing I am going to do is I am going to do a full throw on Mark Meadows, Chief of Staff of 45. Um, I think in a lot of uh, indictments, he's going to probably be a person of interest number two. <laughs> All right. Uh, dear Tarot, dear Creator, Universe, Spirit Guides, please be with me through this reading. Please let me speak only truth. Let any messages that come from beyond be only of truth. Tell us anything, everything that you can tell us about Mark Meadows. Okay. All right. Mark Meadows. I, I just want to know everything about him. Tell us, show us, and, and spirit guides, please speak freely through me. Please tell us what is Mark Meadows what is he doing? What is what is he what is he what is he attempting to do? Oh wait! Oh my! Mm. Oh my! Ooh. All right. Give me one second. Oh my goodness, this is a horrible read. Oh my goodness, I would lock myself in the basement. I would just get canned goods and live in the basement and never leave the house if somebody ever threw this threw this on me, okay? All right, here we go. Uh what is above his head is the devil, force, fatality, and ruin, that which is predestined, but not for this reason evil, okay? He is under the direction of the devil. He is chained and bound, and he cannot escape. What is in his heart is temperance, okay? He is searching for balance, okay? Now, let's read what the temperance card is, okay? Temperance is economy, moderation, uh, frugality, management, and accommodation, okay? And this is what Mark Meadows' job was. He His job was to be accommodating 245. He was 45 manager. That is, and this is at the heart of this drawing, okay? But this is also that search 
for balance, to bring things right. And Mark Meadows is out of balance. What is in for front of him is his fealty to the moneyed king. His um, okay, he's, he's tied his fortune. He's tied his freedom to 45, okay? Look at that card. If that ain't Donald J. Trump, I don't know who it is, okay? Mark Meadows is tied and bound. This is a karmic uh, comeuppance for Mark Meadows. Um, he is going to follow his God to doom, okay? Here's, this is below him. He is going to foolishly follow his Lord and Savior, DJT, straight to hell, okay? He has, he has given 100% of himself to the mission, okay? We get another balance card, guys. This, and it's so out of balance for him. The way that things are going, have gone, and are going to continue to go is going to be rocky. He will never, from this time forward, stand on solid ground. He will have to be thinking on his feet at all times. He will have to make sure not to say anything that is going to seal his fate. Um, and guys, again, be very thankful that the group of people that we are dealing with are morons. Because if they were smart, we would be in all kinds of trouble. That's why we have to shut this, this stuff down. Okay, what's in front of him? What's chasing him? We get the hermit card. This is Mark Meadows' immediate future. He is going to be left hand holding the bag. He is going to be left holding the bag. What 45 did was pick out all his fall guys. Mark Meadows, chief of security, or not security, chief of his administration, okay? He was running everything. So everything falls right back on his shoulders. He was the CEO of the White House, okay? Or the C, yeah. Yeah, he was the he was the CEO under Trump. He was running the White House. He was running the staff, which means his fingers were in everything. He is aware of what is going to happen to him. He is aware that he faces uh, spending the rest of his life in prison if he is found guilty of treason, which he is going to be charged with. Guys, as soon as it is possible, these the word treason is going to appear on indictments, okay? It's just going to take a little time, and it's going to take a lot for a lot of, I, I hate to say it this way, but America is ran by white men. Even now, Joe Biden is a white man, but to get this treasonous crowd in uh, to be to face their consequences, a lot of people in power who do not want to see white men charged with treason are going to have to make that hard swallow. And it's only going to be, it's only going to come after they realize that failing to do it will ensure that the United States is taken over by despots the next time. Okay. The next card we get is the world card. Everybody's watching this. Everybody wants to know what is going to happen to Mark Meadows. Why? Because his fate is going to show what their fate is going to be like. Remember, this is uh, 45's number one guy, okay? His number one guy. Sean Spice, not Sean Spicer, um, all the other ones that left uh, before him, General Kelly, um, who is also 
going to be indicted for the crimes that he committed covering up for Trump, who he verbally called a moron several times on hot mic. Okay. Now, here we go back to Mark Meadows. What we get in the eighth house, in his eighth house, we get the King of Cups. Okay. Good. This is a good, fair, honest man, a man of business, also a man gifted with vision, somebody that can see further than the end of their nose. This, If this was Mark Meadows, this is not him anymore, okay? So this person, I am assuming, is probably um, maybe mm, uh, uh, the Justice Department or could possibly be a male-dominated uh, entity that is going to help bring Mark Meadows to, <laughs> to justice. Okay, and then the final card that we get on Mark Meadows, we get judgment. This is the change card. It's coming. He will face his judgment day. Okay, and, and guys, I, I have to keep saying this. Because justice in America is a slow process. There's a lot of racism. There is a lot of things that people at this tier can do that people at our tier cannot do, such as pushing courts, court dates further and further back filing briefs and motions to stop the case from coming to court. You, only rich people can do that. You have to have money to be able to do that, to stop justice from coming after you. Uh, and Mark Meadows is going to use um, that time to try to delay the inevitable. But uh, Mark Meadows, Mark Meadows has tied his faith to DJT. He's out of balance and he is searching for it with everything in him. He sees the writing on the wall. He knows that that justice is coming for him. He knows that when the shh hits the fan, 45 is not going to have his back. 45 will probably won't even be able to. He'd be like, Mark, who won't know who, who will not provide any cover for him, just as he has provided no cover for anyone else. Guys, I hate to say it like this, but in the at the end of this, we may owe DJT uh, a thanks for not only illuminating how corrupt the GOP can become, but also how stupid they are, and for breaking the whole GOP. DJT did that all by himself. He has literally took a giant pair of scissors and cut the, the GOP into two factions that are now fighting against each other and are going to de destroy themselves. So we can all say, thanks, Don. Thanks for showing us who these people are and that they are not intelligent because that may be what we need to save our own democracy. Guys, be thankful that we were dealing with a bunch of morons. Okay. But the problem is, we may not be so fortunate in the future if we do not take the steps that we need to secure our country now. Okay, my next question is from Denny. And he wants to know what is going to happen to the U.S. truckers who are protesting in Canada. What is going to happen to the U.S. truckers protesting in Canada? I'm feeling that most of them just, uh, as soon as they, they understood that they were going to get fined, the amount of money that they were, uh, that uh, uh, Trudeau was talking about, that a lot of them have decided that they are going to just uh, drive away. Guys, this rolling convoy is not over. It is going to come right back across Detroit and right back into America. If they do not block that bridge, I would be highly, highly um, surprised, um, either on one side or the other. This is this is a distraction, okay? It's meant to cause harm, and it's meant to draw attention to stupidity. 
don't play the game. Don't participate in it, okay? Give it no energy. <laughs> Give them no energy. But let's see, what is going to happen to the U.S. truckers protesting in Canada? What is their fate? Here we go. Mm. Mm. Now, one more. Yes, okay. All right. First card out, guys. We get the lovers. The partnership This working together. This is the, the U.S. faction of this white supremacy working under the guise of make America great again. Uh, screw the government. This is all the same. This is all the same factor. The, all this, the QAnon, all of these conspiracy theory groups. Um, these are also just terrorists, guys. These are Klansmen. These are white supremacists, and this is what they are trying to do to break society, okay? This is an abuse of power, an abuse of power, an abuse of power. Um, they are going to, they are going to face, um, they're going to face their karma, okay? Um, all of their secrets, their secret money, and how their financing will come to light. These guys are going to find themselves alone and desperate, okay? They are going to find themselves without somebody to have their back. So they went over there and kicked up all this dust. Um, but the rich people who just kicked money in there are not going to be the same people who are going to go and get them out of jail. The next card, we get the Three of Cups, okay? This is the celebration card. Now, the Three of Cups reads, um, the conclusion of any matter. So this is gonna, it's gonna come to an end after, um, for some of these people, okay? Um, plenty of perfection, merriment, happiness, fulfillment, and healing, okay? But this is the end. So for, for some of those, for those, yeah, this is what it's saying. For those truckers in Canada, this is the end of the road for them. If they did not leave, they will be fined and will go to jail. And they're going to go to Canada, Canada jail, you know, until they can get extradited to American jail. So they're going to go to jail, which means they're going, their trucks are going to be impounded. That's their livelihood. Um, a lot of people, these people have not thought this out past the bullying bad behavior part on how we're just going to stick it to the man, but they have not figured out how they're going to extract themselves out of it. Next, we get the King of Wands. I can only feel that this is Trudeau, and Trudeau is carrying his big stick and saying, knock it off, get back to work. You know, this is our country. We're not going to play these games, and he's going to start levying fines and prison sentences. And this is a good, this is going to be a good thing for uh, Trudeau. This is going to seriously help him um, as the people are looking to him for, you know, to help us in Ottawa. It's, it's terrible. It is literally harming their, it's shutting down the city center. The people who are in these truck caves are going to, there's the guard guys, they are going to find themselves um, having to dole out a whole lot of money that they don't want to have to pay. And even though this is the, the giving, this is, this is going to be the truckers having to give that money to the government, okay? So, uh, Denny, the U.S. truckers are going to be met with the same face, fate that the... Uh, the um, Canadian truckers are. They are going to be given the, 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 the command to leave or go or be arrested. If they don't leave, they will be arrested. I don't believe that he is going to play any games. And hopefully when they come back across that uh, Detroit bridge, um, Joe Biden won't play any games either. And, and hopefully it'll be stopped before they can even get it set up. All right. I hope that answers your question. My next question is, will, is 45 planning on turning his Bedminster golf club into a cemetery? In the second part of this country, 
and is is will is Ivanka selling coffins? Now we know Ivanka has voting machines. Mm hmm Made in China. Yes, she does. And I'm wondering how many of those made it to the United States during the 2020 election. Anybody interested? I sure am. Okay. But here's the question. Will 45, is he planning on turning his Bedminster Golf Club into a cemetery? And I think this was Denny's question too. I'm not sure. Is Trump planning on turning his Bedminster Golf Club into a cemetery? That is so some creepy stuff. Is that where he's going to bury his base? Mm. Uh, Denny, I don't get a, if, if Denny asked this question, I don't get a concrete yes on that. I don't even get the maybe card. Um, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say nah. Um, if it is, it's it's a plan that hasn't come to it hasn't got any legs or anything on it right now. But I have absolutely nothing that that indicates that 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 he is considering turning Bedminster into a cemetery. Okay. Um I kind of have a feeling he's going to lose most of his branded properties. He's going to have to sell them. So Bedminster and his other golf uh, clubs may not belong to him for very much longer. He's going to have to liquidate so much of his assets uh, to include Mar-a-Lago. Don't be surprised when uh, 45 moves back into Trump Towers. Okay, That's the only place that he actually owns free and clear. Do not be surprised when he moves back to New York because he's going to have to give up Mar-a-Lago, okay? <laughs> Here's my next question. Did Putin um, and 45 plan to use the military to help Putin seize the Ukraine? Were Putin and 45 in cahoots to use the military to allow... Putin to seize the Ukraine. Was that what the plan was? I kind of feel it was. Oh my goodness. Now let me give another shuffle here. My cards are levitating. <laughs> okay. Did, Trump, uh, did Putin in 45 plan to use the military to help Putin seize the Ukraine? Oh my. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this. All right. First card, we get the Ten of Pentacles. Gain riches, family, family home. Okay, this is a, this is a yes. It's not a big yes, but it is a yes. In front of them is the devil. Force metallic, okay? Evil, evil. Below, we get the mutiny card. People laying down their arms. I feel like this would be what have, would have been our American generals saying, nah, we're not going to do that. But yeah, the plan was in. But I feel our military generals would have committed mutiny against the president and refused to allow another country to invade, to, to, to work for Putin. I believe that would have been the straw that broke the camel's back. This is going to come out in some lawsuits, guys. We know that Putin and 45 had a working agreement, okay? He was Putin's puppet. He was in, in his pocket. Hence, Russia is in our grid guys, okay? Don't think that it's not. The next card we have, we get the Hierophant. This is the, the government religious card. This is that power card, and this is Russia's colors. So the, the tarot is telling us, oh yes, there was an agreement 
between 45 and Putin um, that uh, either 45 delay the military's response or not send a response at all uh, to help the to help the Ukraine. The problem is 45 lost the election even though it was rigged. OK, and that's what they're fighting against in honesty. They are they are telling the truth. The election was rigged. They rigged it and they lost. That's why they're pissed. They're like, we fixed this election so we could win and we lost. It's rigged. No, they just didn't count on almost every American of voting age showing up. We voted in numbers too big to rig. And that's what happened. That's why we run, each state won with numbers big enough to not flub the electoral college. That's why they are so hell bent on the electoral college. And you guys need to know that the electoral college is just like the police force. It was put in place to prevent black voices from choosing the president of the United States. Don't believe me? Look it up. It's the same thing as Jim Crow, okay? That's why we have an electoral college to basically say, well, half of our population are too stupid to, uh, to uh, effectively select who we would like to be our leader. The, the electoral college is a part of slavery, Jim Crow, it needs to go. And everybody needs to understand that this petty little garbage that we allow to keep happening year after year after year is what keeps us in this stagnant place. Woo! All right, let me breathe. My heart's beating fast. Guess I don't like Putin too much. Okay, the next card we have, yes, there was a plan to obstruct, okay? And I, I feel that that it was this was supposed to be a delay to allow Putin to go in without a threat of anybody coming after him to take over the Ukraine. But he needed 45 to do that. He needed to know that the United States was not going to uh, sink his battleship. Um and here's the final card. This is this is where I'm, I'm telling you guys, when Putin invades Ukraine, it's going to seal his fate. And this card has come out each time we are talking about Putin in the Ukraine, talking about 45, period. They are going to be left out in the cold. They are going to be left wanting, okay? This is the poverty card. This is the, and this is the, this is their just desserts. They have come from being thought of as the wealthiest, richest, most powerful people. And this is where this is where it is going to leave leave them. Look at the card. It's snowing. One guy has one leg. The woman is barefoot. They are both in tatters and they're standing outside of a church and nobody's helping them. Okay? All right, there's that answer. Yes, 45 and Putin had planned to allow this to happen unobstructed. And now those plans have changed because their rigged election failed. Their rigged election failed. Okay, my next question is, and I and everybody's going to say, we already know the, the, the answer to this. But let's let's put it out on the table from from the universe. Is big pharma's is big pharma keeping us sick? And because if they healed us, they wouldn't have customers. So big pharma doesn't create uh, cures; it creates customers. They want you to be on a on a pill er every day every month for the rest of your life, okay? That's money in their pocket. That's a guarantee that they will never go out of business. How many of us are taking medications, multiple medications per day, and we're not any better, okay? 
Nothing has changed except for the amount of money that we're paying for these pills to keep us in the same sickness. So is Big Pharma keeping us sick? Is that, is Big Pharma keeping us sick? That, you know, I'm going to go the other way now. Is Big Pharma keeping us sick? Here we go. Mm. Yeah, Big Pharma is keeping us sick. Big Pharma is killing us, okay? But here's the, here's the, here's the answer, yes. Big Pharma is keeping us sick. Yes, yes, Big Pharma is keeping us, us sick. And we've seen a lot of things that are going on. We, we've seen Big Pharma fighting about their stance on uh, how that they, they, that they oversaturate um, areas with opioid drugs, things that are known to create, just cause death. And even when they get sent to prison, it doesn't matter because all they do is change the name of the company and continue to sell poison to us until we are dead. Okay. Again, karma is on our side. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know what we need to do. Okay. A lot of these sicknesses, these illnesses are caused by what we put into our bodies. Diabetes is one of them. We know if we eat too much sugar, too much carbohydrates, and we do not exercise, that our blood sugar spikes. And if we live in a, in a high spike blood sugar, we become uh, insulin resistant. And when we become insulin resistant, we gain weight around our belly. And then we have to take a drug called metformin to lower our blood pressure, our blood sugar. Okay. I came off metformin five years ago when I became vegan, guys. When I became vegan and stopped sleeping 12 hours a day and started just moving. I'm not saying this is a work for everyone, but taking animal products out of my diet in two months, my cholesterol was perfect. My blood sugar was perfect. As soon as I cut dairy out of my diet, diet, my skin cleared. Okay, guys, I am 55. I'll be 56 in a couple of days, but I'm 55 years old. Okay, look at me. This is a diet. This ain't no filter. It's a little bit of makeup, but not, I don't wear nothing. Okay. This is because the universe told me to change my diet, to change my lifestyle. And guys, this is one of the things that is going to come. We are being poisoned by our food. We have got to start trying as, as best we can to, to create, make, grow our own foods. It is going to be imperative. Times are changing. The world's changing. I'm going to stop preaching. But we'll get back on this question. Is Big Pharma keeping us sick? Yes. I'm going to stop right there. We all know that it's all illusion and delusion. Big Pharma creates customers. They do not create cures. And they never will. Okay? They, the, their, their final card was the, the, the star. This is uh, loss, theft, and abandonment. Okay, loss, theft, and abandon. You lose your life, they steal your money, and they leave you to die. Big Pharma is nothing but a money-making machine, um, hell-bent on keeping people as customers forever until they're dead. My next question, is uh, processed food responsible for IBS? Crohn's and bowel disease. And that goes right. These two questions go hand in hand. And and this this is all coming back, guys. And I, I hate to preach, but when the universe throws these kind of things out to me and says, deliver this, I have to deliver it. And I can't deliver it with kid gloves. That's what's wrong with this world. Ain't nobody listening to me a child. 
and I'm not going to talk to you like you are. You know what you need to do to be healthy. Do it. Stop procrastinating. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it sucks. But you know what? When you start just one day, don't think about the next day. Just think about this day, okay? This day, choose to go outside. This day, choose to eat a little bit better. This day, choose to smile. Choose to feel joy. Invite it in. Choose you, okay? This day, Choose you and pamper you. Take care of you inside and outside. Feed your brain. Feed your mind as, as, as well as you feed your body. Go somewhere you've never been before. Take a walk down a trail that you've always wanted to see. Go to that waterfall. Go, go skip stones across that flo frozen lake. Sit on a park bench in a snowy park and feed the birds. Choose joy. Choose joy. Choose you. Just today. Okay? So it's Franken food, processed food, responsible for IBS, Crohn's, and bowel disease in America. Yes, and that and everything else that I just said, okay? It, it's, all about, it's all about what we choose and how we choose to behave. Here's the answer. We got the yes. It was the very first card. The first card, the very last card. The first card was the lovers. The last card was the pay, uh, ace of wands. If you need a partner to do it, find a partner to do it. But in the end, it is up to us. We can always, we can make excuses for everything, okay? Don't plan a week. Plan a moment, okay? That's all I'm asking. Don't say next week I'm going to go do this and ride my bike and take a walk and go for a job. No, don't do that because then it won't happen. You're putting so much stress on yourself when you do that. Just say, Hey, I've got five minutes today. I think I'll take a walk, you know? And if you're someplace nice and, and you're in this one of these weird, weird, warm, warm spells, maybe it's just I'll go sit in the green grass and take my shoes off and curl my toes through the grass or in the snow, <laughs> you know? Hey, to each his own. Some people like cold podcasts. That's feet in Spanish. <laughs> Okay, um, my next question, so the answer was yes. My next question is from Spirit Beyond the Stars. Spirit wants to know, where is 45 hiding the evidence that has not been found yet that he removed from the White House? Where is 45 hiding evidence that hasn't been found yet? Guys, do you know, I wonder if they raided Mar-a-Lago. Mar I wonder if they sent federal government, governor, uh, go governor, federal government agents to go raid Mar-a-Lago looking for all those books. And why did they let him have them for a whole year before they decided to go get them? You know, the, the records archive knew stuff was missing. So that, again, you've got people who are working in those departments who are, who are plants that are keeping things going slow. Where is 45 hiding the evidence that hasn't been found yet? That the devil again. Dang, all right. All right, first card we get is the devil, all right? It, this, this, I don't know if this is, is going to be 45 himself, if this is his energy. 
But then I, we have to look at these people who are chained to him. He does nothing that is going to incriminate him. Again, he makes sure that he appoints fall guys. Mark Meadows is going to be the fall guy for a lot of things. And I kind of feel, because the, the card that's in front of him, we get the mutiny card. Okay, people walking away from the leadership. I'm kind of feeling that Trump never led anybody into battle. Okay, he never led anybody into anything. He was never a leader. He was never somebody who you could follow by their example, not any good example. So this is not him. I What I am feeling, Spirit, is that this, and this is going to come right back to Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows knows where the bodies are. Rudy Giuliani, there it is, there it is, there it is. What what Trump doesn't have, it is it's 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 in between Ju Rudy's, Mark Meadows, and, and Trump's. The three of them have different things. I don't know what they were planning on doing with it, but a lot of evidence has already been destroyed, guys. It will never be recouped. Um, things were burned, 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 burned. They were burned knowing that that was a treasonous act. Uh, Mark Meadows is involved in it, and Rudy Giuliani is involved with it. And if somebody doesn't have a, a videotape of the fire, I will be, um, I would be surprised, okay? But they have, they have been destroying. That's what they've been doing. That's why it took them a year. They gave them a year to destroy all that stuff so that they could go through it and read it. And that is part of what Devin Nunez went to Mar-a-Lago for. He was reading through transcripts, making boxes of keeps. Um, oh my goodness. They went through stuff that they knew that they had to keep and the stuff that they knew they could never uh, let see the light of day. Devin Nunez is a part of it. Mark Meadows is a part of it. And Rudy Giuliani is a part of it. They are all going to, oh my gosh. When I say this is big, guys, there is so much. These guys flying back and forth that were um, flying back and forth from Washington, D.C. to, to Mar-a-Lago, uh, running down there to kiss the ring. They all, again, let him. As dumb as Trump is, his Putin playbook worked like a charm. It put all of them, he had a way to scare them using Putin's plan. And that's why they jumped on the planes and went immediately to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring. We are so lucky. We dodged a bullet. We would be learning German or, or Russian right now, guys. We would be learning Russian. There was so much underhanded dirtiness going on in that entire administration. Crimes upon crimes upon crimes. The dirty people, Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani, Bill Barr, Devin Nunez, all these guys are going to face the music. They will pay the piper, okay? But it's going to take time. These crimes are deep and wide. And they had Bill Barr, who was the smartest of all of them, orchestrating it for them. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. There's plants everywhere. Okay. My next question, will the father and son duo that shot at uh, the black FedEx worker, again, be prosecuted? This is getting ridiculous. This is getting absolutely ridiculous. Black people cannot just do their job. Can't be DoorDash. Can't be Uber. Oh, I guess, you know, certain white people just don't want black folks to be on the street visible ever at all, you know. Will they face, will they be convicted? Will they be convicted? I don't even want to talk about this. I'm so sick. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it. It's disgusting. What's going to happen when the black people decide that they're going to strap up and they're not going to take it anymore? Then everybody's going to be scared. But you know what? It's not going to happen because it never did because we're not. 
We are not what everybody says we are. Black people are not violent. We are not the people who, who destroyed this country. You know, no, let me stop getting mad. Let me stop. I'm sorry. Okay. Will the father and son duo that shot at the black FedEx worker be prosecuted? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, they will. But not before, not before it's made a spectacle. They're they're going they're going to find themselves now, and and I think this is going to only be because the FedEx worker is not going to let them off the hook. He wants pro, he wants to press charges. He is going to press charges. So he's going to sue them. He's going to sue them into poverty. You know, and that's going to be their tower moment. However. They're, the law is going to try to say, well, that somehow they were justified because they felt like they were protecting their neighborhood, even though they chased him and blocked his vehicle and fired inside of it. Not to mention that that bullet could have went, well, did go somewhere. Who Did someone else get injured or die because of a stray bullet? But the law is going to make this a spectacle. Okay, things are going to be out of balance. All the dirtiness is going to be drug up on the beach for everybody to 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 uh, see, but the stench is just going to be too great. This is going to be like another Rittenhouse freaking trial, guys. They're going to get found guilty. I believe they are, but it won't be until after they are um the 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 after the racist faction of, of justice tries to uh, paint them as martyrs, I, and, I, and I'm disgusted. But yes, uh, uh, yes, I think this was Spirit's question too. I think that um, they, they are going to, they're going to be convicted, um, and they're going to be sued into almost oblivion. But I, uh, the, the, the crimes that they're going to be charged with are not going to fit what they did. This is going to be another Kyle Rittenhouse moment. Okay, my next uh, read. Actually, we're at 47 minutes. I'm going to do the weather. Guys, I'm going to do Nancy, Nancy Pelosi on Friday Live because I'm kind of pissed at Nancy right now. I'm really, I really am. I'm really upset about what she said about Cori Bush and about... Um, rebranding and, and rethinking the police. And she was totally against that, which tells me that Matt, Nancy Pelosi does not give a damn about my black ass. Okay. So I'm going to read on Nancy on Friday, but right now I am going to get to the weather report because y'all, hmm, I'm telling you right here in Vegas for the last four or five days, we have been almost in the 80s on some days. So between, I mean, waking up in the morning and it's already 50 degrees and then it getting to 79, 80 degrees by one or two o'clock in the, in the afternoon, crazy heat. Yesterday, and I told you guys, yesterday night, I it was like the whole universe was exploding. There were booms and bangs. And then the wind came up and then hailstones in Las Vegas. Just blah, 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 blah. Just crazy. Today, guys, um, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, going right there, that little band going across Texas. Be aware. Um, this is the pop-up storms I was telling you guys about. Be aware of these pop-up storms. They are going to be fast moving. They're going to drop a lot of water in a short amount of time, and they are just going to book it right out of there. Be aware of, of just these pop-up thunderstorms, the cells. They are cells. Pop-up tornadoes. Oh, my God. Oklahomans, uh, North Texans, Alabamians. Oh my goodness. Oh, Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Be aware. 
Colorado. Colorado? Be aware, okay? Wind, fast moving storms across the upper part of the United States. And it's the jet stream I couldn't remember the name of, guys. That's what has changed. Our debt jet stream that used to be very consistent across the United States has now went up into the Arctic and down into the subtropics. We are in for it, okay? So be prepared of just crazy, crazy weather now through Sunday, okay? And you're going to have the whole mix, just like we've had these almost summertime, summertime temperatures in February. And that doesn't happen normally. Usually Las Vegas hangs out around 60 in, in um, winter, which makes it a beautiful way because you can, you can still wear shorts at 60 in Vegas. But 80 degrees in February in Vegas is, it's not nice, okay? It, is, it might seem like it's fun, but those UVs, we're at, we are in solar minimum. This is craziness. This is where people can seriously get injured um, by UV rays, by UV radiation. Be careful, fair-skinned people. Be careful. Be careful out there. I'm just saying, okay, this weather is going to be nuts. These pop-up storms this week are going to be, like I said, they're going to move fast. And every place is going to get a little dappling of something, okay? Maybe a little rain, maybe a little hail. Um, but some of you, like I said, are going to be in a pop-up tornado system. Fast, fast, fast moving. Um, barometer drops. It's going to be nuts. Be aware. Be aware. Um, I feel like I need to talk to my people who live in vans, who live in their vehicles, who live in vans, buses. Make sure, park, find a parking lot. Try not to park near trees, okay? Find a parking lot. Try not to park near where water may rise or wind may push your vehicle over. So if you can find some type of parking lot that's got like a, a a big wall that kind of blocks the air from coming in, try to park there at least for this week. Trees out in the woods could be very dangerous. Falling limbs from fast moving storms can crush vehicles. Please, if you're living in your vehicle, try to find a parking lot that'll accommodate you. Park away from uh, power poles and the such. Um, I feel like there's going to be tree events, uh, falling trees, falling power lines, uh, flying debris. Just be as careful as you possibly can, my van dwellers, okay? All right, guys. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. The north, the west coast is, is going gonna, gonna to be cold and wet. Some of the wet will be white. Some of the wet will be clear, but it's going to be cold and wet. Okay. I love you guys. I love you. Please come Friday with your questions for the Friday live show. And like I said, we're going to do a deep dive into Nancy Pelosi. I got a bad feeling about my girl, y'all. All right. I will talk to you guys later. I love you. Namaste. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.